Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. It's a tremendous joy to share another inspiring message with you today. Before we begin, I'd like to ask a special favor. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button right now. This simple gesture helps us reach more people with God's Word. Also, don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Your participation is crucial for the growth of this community of faith. Today, we're going to explore a theme that deeply touches all our hearts, God's provision. In a world marked by economic uncertainties, personal challenges, and constant needs, the question of divine provision becomes increasingly relevant. Many of us have faced moments of scarcity, doubt, or worry about how our needs will be met. It's in this context that God's Word brings us a powerful and comforting promise. In Philippians 4.19, the Apostle Paul declares, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. This statement is not just a pious wish or an expression of vague optimism. It's a promise grounded in God's nature and character, sealed by Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Over the next few minutes, we'll dive deep into this transformative truth, exploring what it means to truly trust in God's provision in our daily lives. We'll uncover the biblical principles that help us live in this trust and discover how we can experience the abundance of divine care in all areas of our existence. Let's begin by reflecting on the nature of divine provision. When we talk about God's provision, what exactly do we mean? Often we limit our understanding to just the financial or material aspect. However, God's provision is much more comprehensive and profound. First, we must understand that God is the source of all provision. James 1.17 reminds us that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. This means that everything we have and are is a gift from God. Our very breath of life, our abilities, the relationships we enjoy, the opportunities that arise in our path, all of this is part of divine provision. God's provision also encompasses our emotional and spiritual needs. In moments of loneliness, He promises to be our constant companion. When we are weak, He offers His strength. In times of confusion, He grants us wisdom. As Psalm 23 verse 1 states, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. This declaration covers all dimensions of our existence. It's crucial to understand that God's provision doesn't always manifest in the way we expect or desire. Sometimes, in our limited human perspective, we might think that God is not meeting our needs. However, His infinite wisdom sees beyond our immediate circumstances. As Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9 remind us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Often, God provides in unexpected ways or uses challenging situations to shape our character and deepen our faith. The Apostle Paul, who wrote about God's provision in Philippians, also shared his personal experience in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 9. He talks about a thorn in the flesh that tormented him and how despite his prayers for deliverance, God responded, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes, God's provision comes in the form of strength to endure, not in the removal of the problem. Now, let's explore more deeply what it means to trust in God's provision. Trust is not just a feeling or a passive attitude, it's an active decision that manifests in our daily actions. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 exhorts us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Trusting God implies recognizing our dependence on Him. In a culture that values self-sufficiency and independence, it can be challenging to admit that we need help. However, it's precisely in this vulnerability that we experience the fullness of divine grace. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
This trust manifests through prayer. Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 instructs us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is not just a means of presenting our needs to God, but a way of aligning our heart with His, recognizing His sovereignty and goodness. Another fundamental aspect of trusting in God's provision is the practice of gratitude. It's easy to focus on what we lack, but gratitude helps us recognize the countless ways in which God has already blessed us. Paul himself, writing from prison, exhorts the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4 verse 4. Gratitude not only honors God, but also transforms our perspective, allowing us to see His hand even in the most challenging circumstances. Trust in God's provision also manifests through generosity. It may seem contradictory, but the more we trust in God as our source, the freer we feel to share what we have. Jesus taught in Luke 6 verse 38, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Generosity is a tangible expression of our trust that God will supply all our needs. It's important to emphasize that trusting in God's provision doesn't mean passivity or irresponsibility. God has given us abilities, talents, and resources to be used wisely. Proverbs 10 verse 4 reminds us that lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Trusting God means doing our part, working diligently and using wisely the resources He has entrusted to us, while recognizing that ultimately, it is He who provides. When we talk about God's provision, we can't ignore the central role of Jesus Christ. Our key passage in Philippians 4 verse 19 emphasizes that God will meet our needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. It is through Christ that we have access to all spiritual blessings, as Paul declares in Ephesians 1 verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross not only secured our eternal salvation, but also opened the floodgates of divine provision in our lives. As Paul argues in Romans 8 verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? If God has already given us the greatest possible gift, his own son, we can trust that He will not withhold anything that is truly necessary for us. This truth leads us to reflect on what really constitutes a need in our life. Often we confuse wants with needs. God promises to supply our needs, not necessarily all our wants. 1 Timothy 6 verses 6 to 8 offers us a wise perspective. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. This doesn't mean that God doesn't care about our desires or that He will never fulfill them. Psalm 37 verse 4 encourages us, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. However, as we delight in the Lord, our desires begin to align with His. We discover that our greatest need and desire is to know Him more deeply and live in His will. Trusting in God's provision also involves learning to live with contentment, regardless of circumstances. Paul shares his personal experience in Philippians chapter 4 verses 11 to 13. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. This contentment is not passive resignation, but an active trust in God's goodness and sufficiency. As we learn to trust in God's provision, 
we discover an incredible freedom. We are freed from the anxiety that often accompanies the relentless pursuit of material security. Jesus encourages us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 26. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? This trust frees us to live generously and with purpose. When we trust that God will supply our needs, we can use our resources, time, talents and treasures to bless others and advance God's kingdom. As Paul exhorts in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. It's important to remember that trusting in God's provision is a journey, not a destination. There will be times when our faith is tested, times when circumstances seem to contradict God's promises. In these moments, we are called to cling to the truth of God's word, even when we don't feel it emotionally. Jesus himself faced such a moment in the Garden of Gethsemane. Facing the cross, he prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26, verse 39. Jesus demonstrated the deepest trust in the Father's provision, even in the face of the greatest challenge he ever faced. As we conclude our reflection on trusting in God's provision, I'd like to encourage you to take a practical step of faith today. Identify an area in your life where you've been struggling to trust God. It could be related to finances, relationships, health, or any other need. Surrender that area completely to God in prayer, declaring His promise from Philippians 4 verse 19 over your situation. Remember, God's provision doesn't always come in the way we expect, but it always comes according to His perfect wisdom and infinite love for us. As Romans 8.28 assures us, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Dear brothers and sisters, may we grow each day in trusting our Heavenly Father's loving provision. May our lives be a living testimony of God's care and faithfulness, inspiring others to trust in Him as well. Before we close, I'd like to thank you for taking this time to reflect on God's Word with us. If this message touched your heart, please share it with someone who might need encouragement. Don't forget to leave your like and share in the comments how you've experienced God's provision in your life. Your story might be exactly what someone needs to hear today. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Until the next video, stay firm in faith and remain in the peace of the Lord.